Welcome back again to this course MS012 Ecosystem and Natural Resources a blog for on agro biodiversity. This course is of the program Postgraduate Diploma in Sustainability Science. Tell on us today in this session have the major focus of this session will be on effects of agriculture on agro biodiversity. We have learned about the agro biodiversity, whether its values, findings on agro biodiversity. In the same time, back of our activities to the threats to agro biodiversity. Now it, uh, we have to learn from the lens of sustainability about effects of agriculture on agro biodiversity. So in that we are looking from the lens of how its annual and perennial crops are affecting by our way of agriculture on agro biodiversity in the form of in that uh, agro biodiversity component like soil uh, crop rotation, water management, and uh, how of, uh, that application of fertilizer and pesticide has effect on agro biodiversity the way we are using grass cover and the way we are grazing and the way we are following the abandonment of agricultural land and so on so we are going to focus on that moreover uh, there is a louise gaps in knowledge agro biodiversity and the way it's depletion so we will have quick look into that when we talk about effects of agro agriculture on agro biodiversity, as we know that agriculture is the main dominant anthropogenic factors controlling biodiversity. No agricultural area represents a major uh, majority of the land area of many countries. Like for example, say 75% in England, 60% in France, 757% approximately these are approximate value in India, they are uh, geographical area and agricultural areas. Well, you know, recently our preoccupation with biodiversity losses are mostly focused on the destruction and transformation of natural habitat. Numerous human managed landscapes also contain species diversity that are comparable to those of natural ecosystem, with in particular the persistence of numerous threatened species. If the contribution of biodiversity is to be based on the protection of this 5% of the currently existing natural habitats to be successful it will also be required the recognition of remainder of the area of a country. So the agricultural region of numerous countries are over 2000 years old. We know that over the time period, over the time a large number of wild species have become adapted to these landscapes with the result of being the, the development of species reads human modified landscape. In parallel, the you know, continued growth of human population and the resulting occupation of space that have resulted in the destruction of natural habitats. Some species have thus uh, lost their initial habitat and have become almost entirely dependent on secondary habitat and primarily agricultural activities to survive. Many, based on many of the studies, they have quantified the influence of agricultural management on biodiversity, both in terms of the equilibrium between natural managed areas and of the quality to, uh, of areas managed by the agriculture. So, uh, evaluation and understanding the effect of agriculture on biodiversity has become a major challenge in establishing of genetic knowledge that is useful for stakeholder when you talk about uh, in the domain of scientific research. So by definition you know uh, this agricultural activity it seeks to uh, manage and control biodiversity but you know it is in a very different manner depending on the agro ecosystem. So the effects of different practice on biodiversity have been, I mean, very important to understand. Based on the sum of the available literature, we learned that the ability of landscape to provide for different species that depends both in their structure and the quality of each of their components. That we study about that when we study in the first block of this course about the concept of ecosystem and the concept of ecology. So these factors are determined by the agricultural mosaics and by the switch of agricultural practice employed by farmers. So increased landscape complexity that is represented in agricultural landscape by proportion of that crop areas to semi-natural elements and you know by their special arrangement that favors and that overall biodiversity right is thus is like oh, uh, the use of non-intensive agriculture practices right you know this agricultural activities also exerts an influence on biodiversity through a complex network mechanism like you know 
that uh, mechanism include the impact of agricultural practices at the plot level on the environmental condition in that uh, this experienced by organisms and also you know the impact of agriculture on habitat heterogeneity in terms of diversity of ecosystem elements when talk about that diversity of agroecosystem elements about crop areas you know it include field margin wooded areas irrigation canals extent and also you know and the diversity of ecosystem agroecosystem natural ecosystem at larger scales such as landscape when you talk about landscape landscapes about that region so particular uh, this effect of agriculture on on agro biodiversity at different level depending upon the activities we are doing like you know what are its effect of agriculture on annual and perennial crops then when you follow some of the activities what are the effects of that activities like soil cultivation crop rotation water management then application of fertilizer and pesticide and effects of the grass cover grazing following abandonment effect of modification of landscape complexity and fragmentation effects of organic agriculture and genetically modified organism so when you talk about effects of annual and perennial crops you know crop fields when you look into the crop fields they are generally have specific ecological characteristic that includes large fluxes of materials in a strongly human constrained trophic structure which creates system in permanent disequilibrium requiring constant human intervention so you know uh, these crop fields are subject to intense disturbance right we know that that intervention for the control of we are trying to control or control the pest species and the mass removal of primary production that is which so uh, in that crop field we have relative sparse the uniformity and a periodic resetting of the system so and then another is the use of synthetic phytosanitary product and repeated deploughing as well as fertilization these are the major factors in the decline of the species richness and abundance of numerous organisms especially soil organisms so this have effects are also at the same time intentionally and unintentionally it is intentional when acting to favor some particular crop right non intentional when they exert negative effects on the population of crop pest natural enemies or artwork and uh, when we talk about the weedy weedy crops you now for example about orchard and vine guard due to the permanence of their host plant numerous pest species remain continually present at their control request a repeated application of phytosanitary product which consequently is the major factor affecting to the biodiversity in their systems like you know apple orchard for example they are subject to up to 30 pesticide application per year and are treated for long periods of 6 to 8 months per season starting from budding to until harvest so imagine how much impact will be in that environment so there are direct effect like mortality or decrease in fecundity and of greater lay or less severity depending on the product we are using on the target organism as well as for other species present in that orchard in that system including your arthropods birds small mammals etc. and in addition to that there are other indirect impact in the same groups due to the suppression of resources like we suppress with the plants prey species and the alteration of trophic chains when you check out that those with the species with the plants or prey species you know that alters the trophic chains that chemical protection of an orchard has significant we know that negative effect on the insect functional diversity and compromise the nature regulation of some based of particularly we took into the apples right in the same way in other orchard also then coming to the second the effect of soil cultivation crop rotation and water management we know that we follow the plowing when we did do cultivation so when we uh, use the plowing in a repeated manner that has a negative effect on the species richness and abundance of many organism it selects for weedy species depending on the ability of their trees to survive in the soil the abundance of soil microfauna and in particular artworm is significantly reduced by when we follow deep plowing in the case of repeated plowing and that some of the unfavorable conditions like uh, low organic resources containing microclimate condition in that condition the species richness of macrofauna communities uh, that can also be reduced well you know on the other side the abundance of microfauna and uh, that macrofauna in that that has less affected than the 
macrofauna by different technique of cultivation, the profound modification of trophic and microclimatic condition that resulting from this intervention strong um, that directly affect the composition of their trophic structure. We also know that uh, crop rotation induces higher densities and diversities of soil organism than continuous cropping observation as uh, based on some of the experiment it observed and it's kind of uh, that impact we are looking uh, we are um, observing that is talking about crop rotation uh, that talk about the higher densities now that is effective when we follow in a perennial or we introduce a perennial uh, plant into that rotation right the use of this any form of rotation that breaks the development cycle of pest species and the weed species to some crop and is useful for the control of other pests. This is the benefits of crop rotation, right? So in that way, this rotation allows for reduction in pesticide use with consequent positive effects on biodiversity, right? Again, if we come into the water management, at, uh, then that's also a uh, plot level either through drainage or irrigation, they can have variable effect on the biodiversity because uh, some of the negative effect groups of wetland because when we use wetlands water for irrigation, so that have a major decline of agrobiodiversity in that area. Irrigation, you know, in fact, has an overall favorable effect on soil fauna, but uh, sometimes it leads to a decrease in plant diversity. So soil fauna biodiversity is particularly affected by soil moisture condition that's why irrigation has also some limitation right then coming to you know application of fertilizers and pesticide is one of the important uh, activities we follow or input in modern agriculture right crop fertilization we know that has globally positive result on the abundance and crop of living organisms in the soil and vegetation as long as this does not reach a toxic level however effect on the species richness of plants and insects are generally negative. So increasing fertilizer application to uh, level first you know uh, on communities of soil organism that is directly affected by changes in physical and chemical environment with the consequent effect on species richness and composition. So and secondly on the biodiversity of organism that link to the nutritional status of plants through modification of trophic change. So in general, the increase in fertilization allowed by the use of synthetic fertilizers that has resulted in homogenization of many environments in terms of resource availability and that has led to the disappearance of many species that is adapted to low nutrient environment and sometimes the replacement of specialist species by generalists like birds. So, uh, like nitrogen fertilization, this is one of the factors responsible for the decrease in species richness of crop fields. And it's when we follow that, that not only do that, that crop fields that also have impact on the adjacent boundary areas. So, organic fertilization that ha appears to have more subtle effect in particular in microbial community. It is no beyond uh, all these effects, plot scale, no. Increased fertilizer use has effect on aquatic ecosystem, both continental and coastal. We know eutrophication is happening, non point, point source of water pollution happening. These are some of the examples of impact of fertilization. When you talk about pesticide or synthetic phytosanitary product, which is considered as one of the major factors responsible for declining biodiversity in this ecosystem in most of industrial. Uh, industrialized countries. So the effect of phytosanitary products studied on anthropods and uh, in particular on crop taste and their natural enemies that depend on their life cycle or life history, that demographic parameter and development stage, the when and the how it is at that pesticide is at we use this pesticide. And sometimes insecticides some that are non-toxic for particular useful species are in reality just kind of insecticide, pesticide barrier. So most of the pesticide have a more or less global effect on arthropod communities. You can see that right, uh, more toxic herbicide uh, to the soil fauna and uh, particularly in earthworm and soil arthropod. Even fungicide are more toxic. And if you look into the impact of herbicide on soil food web, it is di indirect. Generally, they are indirect uh, because soil flora, flora the soil food webs they have direct link have a link with uh, that soil organic matter uh, cycle thing 
and can the effect of uh, this activities on vertebrates we have well observed in uh, birds and amphibians we're talking about uh, that that of birds and amphibians because of use of our excess uh, pesticide insecticide then herbicide use uh, that also induce a major reduction in the number of plant species and of their biomass and crop fields and also in their margin so the continued utilization of the same herbicide molecule has caused the development of some species population that are resistance to the applied molecule so such phenomena may be accentuated with establishment of crops of herbicide resistant genetically modified organism then uh, next is the effect of grass cover grazing following abandonment we have further permanent grassland which are characterized by perennial multi species or at least multi layer vegetation covers that do not in general receive pesticide when this permanent grassland cover a large variety of situation from those heavily fertilized and intensively exploitation to rangeland and summer pasture they experience low stocking rates and these areas generally have a biodiversity considerably greater than that of crop fields and are often considered as semi natural area so the major factors influencing their biodiversity are grazing regimes and the practice of mowing or hay cutting and fertilization So in general, this high grazing intensity that tends to have a marked negative effect on the species richness of different types of organism, plants, arthropods, small mammals, and soil fauna. However, uh, if you look into the uh, that particular bird uh, community, the bird richness uh, they they may be high in heavily grazed pasture, even if the abundance of species is reduced. so moderate level of grazing lead to an increase in the plant species richness and in organism so in fact in case of plant because of grazing species richness tends to decrease when grazing pressure is very low especially in productive grassland right so these are some of the impact right of grazing and again if you look uh, from the functional point of view an increase in grazing pressure uh, selects for plants with shorter life span smaller size and with efficient producers acquisition abilities so the weedy flora fauna fellows made up of species who sits where content in soil sit bank consequently there are some species uh, which are normally found in the plot and no additional biodiversity is to be expected from the simple placing for a plot in fellow however uh, the lower management pressure experience in a fellow they can allow the recruitment of that some rare species So in the absence of soil cultivation, you know that also results in annual species blooming replaced by biennial or perennial. So we think uh, some area is a fellows, right? So this fellow establishes a benefit to the environment and wild animals that can be shown with a mix of species that are more or less diverse, right? Like you know cereals, legumes, buckwheat, etc. So their faunal richness depends on the nature and botanical complexity of their vegetation so the effect of biodiversity of the abandonment site or previously exploited area depends strongly on its initial state that's we talk about that uh, ecological situation and so on in uh, some of the session right so in the case of crop fields like cereals vineyard or cut etc in this crop fields they are characterized by an environment initially poor in species spaciousness increases during the first few years of following abandonment following that abandonment for practically all groups of organism including your microorganism so in functional terms abandonment leads to a replacement of plant species with a short life span small size wind dispersal and high resource acquisition abilities by species with opposite characteristic and uh, which are often animal dispersed especially in forest states what are the effects of modification of landscape complexity in the fragmentation if we look historically the development of agriculture has been accompanied by major transformation of landscape and the destruction of natural habitat if you uh, say precisely land use changes and the modification of agricultural practice they become I mean, it was in a higher intense uh, that in height means towards a greater inten- intensification, especially since 1950s, and that has resulted a major modification in structure of landscape. When we modify the structure of landscape, that have direct affected the biodiversity. So this structural modification have mainly included that reduction in the heterogeneities or complexity of landscape emphasized by the effect of successive agricultural policies in that region in the same time the abandonment of marginal agricultural areas has led to a homogenization of vegetation cover and that also have a 
in direct affect to the biodiversity right so increasing heterogeneity in agricultural landscape has in general a positive effect on biodiversity sometimes so it increases the species richness of the majority of animal and plant groups and contributes to increase in the abundance uh, most of these so recent you know at landscape scale poorly represented landscape elements and non agricultural elements that play a major role is refuse habitat for numerous species and thus play a large role in increasing biodiversity then the presence of grassland in a landscape and in particular low productivity grasslands favorable for biodiversity whether like you know for birds earthworm or soil micro so the effect of landscape structure they are generally more pronounced for above ground metropods and bird debates than for plants soil fauna and micro so from a functional point of view landscape heterogeneity favors uh, favors insect that are pollinators or natural elements of crop pests and limits insect pests so landscape homogenization that finally leads to a simplification of communities by decreasing the presence of rare species and increasing that of common species landscape heterogeneity agricultural practices and drug system they act simultaneously on biodiversity sometimes in synergy and sometimes in opposite with effect on uh, of one limiting potential uh, effect of other then effect of organic agriculture and genetically modified organism you know uh, impacts of conventional organic agriculture on biodiversity have been compared by different studies changing from conventional agricultural production to an organic one often has an overall positive effect on biodiversity so the richness of plants soil organism the vertebrate and arthropods are increased because of this organic agriculture right abundance of invertebrate predators they also increase while the response of soil fauna are either sometimes they do not have much a negative impact they may be neutral or that positive impact so organic agriculture is more favorable to predator species which are often involved in the biological control of pests for soil fauna the beneficial effect of organic agriculture occur not only in crop fields but also in neighboring margin heads grow so adopting organic agriculture practices that will have it will have a few effects um, on agrobi uh, and on biodiversity in simplified intensively managed landscape due to lack of uh, source population however if you look in landscape that retain some semi natural habitat and the source population organic culture that has a positive impact coming to the impact of gmo means genetic modified organization on biodiversity organisms on biodiversity they are specific to the varieties cultivated into the gene introduced in general this consists of you know varieties resistant to non selective herbicide or mat tolerant to an insect pest so in the case of resistance to the herbicide the effect include more complete vegetation removal including the field boundaries also the consequence of this may include in uh, that decrease in population dependent on weed species as tropic resources and the selection of population of weed resistance to the molecules they use so the case of varieties uh, introducing producing like bt toxin which confers tolerance to some insect pests has been the subject of numerous ecotoxicological study so finally what you can the possibility of transfer of genes to other species in the field depends on the genetically modified species that consider there and its capacity to hybridize with wild species we know that gaps in knowledge about agrobiodiversity in its depletion is exist so we have several studies uh, is in front of us you can find out very easily any of the literature that studies on effect of agriculture on biodiversity they have a number however it is apparent that few of these studies have developed genetic that generate uh, hypothesis and the some of the theory that are capable of efficiently guiding public policy now there's certain reason for this this have been explained in that uh, in some session also when you talk about the biodiversity say uh, biological it, uh, it is a variety and variability organism so so we need to look all those in spatial scale and temporal scale the spatial scale and the level of organization at which the effect of agricultural biodiversity are considered and uh, you will find a number of study on that while we talk on the theoretical from framework exist there are capacity to structure current knowledge into general principle has rarely been tested and they are rarely used so the ways in which agriculture human stakeholders and their environment interaction are taken into account we need to explore more on this uh, the current knowledge of the effect of agriculture on the biodiversity is been overwhelmingly 
from ecological agricultural models and different studies we have seen number of studies so about stakeholders economic, economic factor socioeconomic factor they are often powerful drivers of biodiversity changes they are largely ignored in studies investigating effect of agriculture and biodiversity so an understanding of ecological socioecological economic legal and the technical processes determinant constraints associated to various stakeholders is desirable in order to fully appreciate dynamic of all these changes there is an emerging consensus you know among civil society the research community and policy makers that concrete step must be taken to promote sustainable use of agrobiodiversity scientific controversy remain cob over its meaning and how to achieve it so international treaty on plants and genetic resources of food and agriculture such kind of treaty requires contracting party parties to devise policy mechanisms and measures to support sustainable use the convention like you know convention on biological diversity and uh, that has you know also explained very well and we are i'm implementing such kind of commendation of such kind of uh, convention so there are you know two reason uh, why it is essentially to integrate research about a component of biodiversity because uh, from perspective of landscape or habitat perspective we are trying to understand agro biodiversity you know we have to include the other and allied um, and, uh, species which is associated with that system so holistic approach to valuing the components of agro biodiversity will advance our scientific knowledge in addition applied Research that takes interactive uh, interaction among components into account could lead to estimate of costs and the benefit that differ in important ways from those activities that doesn't that was not included. Trying to understand that effect, so so ignoring the interaction among uh, different component that if you ignore that there will be bias in policy recommendation, right? And so um, we need to integrate the production of two or more agrodiversity component crops and livestock when we i mean recommend such kind of implement such kind of policy right for example today in this session uh, what we discussed was on the effect of agriculture and agrobiodiversity and how uh, this uh, agriculture is affecting to annual perennial crops and the way we are following the soil cultivation crop rotation and different activities they have direct impact on the agro biodiversity uh, in particular and biodiversity in, uh, in general and we also know that there are gaps in knowledge in about agro biodiversity and its depletion that needs to be strengthened we need to narrow down the gap so that sustainable agriculture can be effectively implemented with this thank you thank you very much see you in next session